What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, where we continue the reading of the phenomenal must-read Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Today, number eight, August 14th, 2018. This week's newsletter includes the usual dashboard and action items, news about the importance of allowing secure and anonymous responsible disclosure of bugs, a potential new payment protocol that can improve privacy on Bitcoin without any consensus rule change, shaving one byte of the size of every transaction signature, a new restriction on the peer-to-peer -peer network protocol, and lowering the minimum transaction relay fee, plus a few notable commits from the Bitcoin Core, L&D, and C Lightning projects. Action items. Check your responsible disclosure proceed, uh, process. It's especially important that researchers be able to report bugs secure, securely, for example, using PGB, and anonymously, for example, using Tor. See the news section below for links to details about a previously responsible disclosure of a consensus failure bug in the Bitcoin Cash cryptocurrency that could have been used to steal funds from exchanges. Even those that require multiple confirmation for deposit transactions, as well as suggested best practices for making disclosures easily. Check your software for using the peer-to-peer -peer protocol, get blocks and get header messages. If you use custom software that requests blocks using either of these messages, ensure that you don't make these requests with more than 101 locators. All popular open source softwares have already been tested, but if you have internal software that speaks the peer-to-peer -peer protocol, you, you may need to test it. See the news sections for details. Dashboard items. Transactions. Fees remain very low. Anyone who can wait 10 or more blocks for confirmation can reasonably pay the default minimum fee rate. It's a good time to consolidate UTXOs, as usual. Estimated Bitcoin hash rate briefly touched, and now get seated, 60 exa hashes. 60 exa hashes on August 10th and has a seven day average of 48 exa hashes. That is mind bogglingly huge. The number of transactions in each block, this metric is, a, is a vaguely periodic in that it has peaks at around 13 o'clock and 17 o'clock UTC each day. The graph below shows a 25-block moving average of these number of transactions. It was sourced from the Optech beta dashboard that we encourage peers to try out and provide us feedback about. Here you see the nice graph of the transactions per block in a 25-block moving average on July 4th, 2018 through August 13th, 2018. News. How to help securely security researchers. Bitcoin Core developer and digital currency initiative member Corey Fields revealed that, that he was the anonymous source behind the disclosure of a potentially consensus breaking bug in the Bitcoin Cash cryptocurrency. Shitcoin. After a frustrating experience trying to report the bug, he requested cryptocurrency-related projects make it easier for security researchers to submit secure, anonymous vulnerability reports to projects. And fellow Digital Currency Initiative member Neha Narula followed this up with some recommendations, particularly targeted at cryptocurrency maintainers, but possibly also useful for organizations using cryptocurrencies. Optech encourages our member companies and any other reading this newsletter to consider how easy it would be for an anonymous researcher to report a critical bug to your staff. 
An easy way to testing your process could be testing one of your team members to install Tor and actually attempt to securely submit a report using no information about your operation other than what they can easily find on the website. If you provide bug bounties, you may also wish to make clear that you will provide the same level of reward to anyone who initially rep reports a PGB signed disclosure subject to you later collecting any information from them you need for legal compliance. Pay to endpoint, idea proposed. Blog post by Adam Fiskor Nopara of the CK Snacks and Matthew Hayward of Blockstream described a new idea for improving privacy for Bitcoin users without making any changes to the consensus protocol. Well, guess what? Nopara is always working on privacy. <laughs> the basic idea is that spenders' contacts are servers. The basic idea is that spenders contact a server controlled by the receiver when attempting to make a payment similar to BIP70 payment protocols. And these are the reusable payment codes that are established in the Samurai wallet as payments. Provide a nominal, normal signed transaction as proof that they're willing to pay and then receive the information necessary to perform multiple coin join style transactions with the receiver. If one of the coin join style transaction is used, this can confuse blockchain analysis companies into thinking an input added to the transaction by this receiver was an input that belonged to the spender. Or if pay to endpoint is widely used, just making blockchain analysis feel less reliable in general. If discussions continued positively and a specific proposal is agreed upon, several privacy-focused wallets are considering adding support for pay-to-endpoint spending and B2C pay server is considering adding support for BTC uh, for pay-to-endpoint receiving. Bitcoin Core Wallet to begin only creating low R signature. The DER format used to encode Bitcoin signature requires adding an extra byte to the signature just to indicate when the signature R value is on the top half of the elliptical curve used in Bitcoin and the R value is randomly derived. So half of all signatures have this extra byte. Go back a couple uh, newsletters and see how exactly uh, this plays out. Merger this week, Bitcoin pull request generates multiple signatures for each transaction, if necessary, using an incremental nonce until the signature is found that has a low R value that does not require this extra byte. By doing so, Bitcoin core transactions will save one byte per every two signatures on average. If all wallets did this, it could save up to several thousand bytes or up to a couple thousand virtual bytes per typical full block, increasing blockchain capacity by up to a few thousand transactions a day. These costs, the cost is that it will take Bitcoin Core twice as long to generate an average signature and that it reduces the entropy or randomness of the generated signature by one bit, neither of which is significant. It may also make transactions created by Bitcoin Core somewhat easier to identify if no other wallet adopts this change. Note that this change does not affect other software in any way, except for other wallets being able to use the extra blockchain capacity. It's purely a feature built into the Bitcoin Core wallet and not something that will be enforced for the protocol. Lowering the minimum relay fees in two steps, as mentioned in the newsletter number three. Bitcoin Core developers are considering lowering the minimum relay fee for transaction because this change affects wallets, relay nodes, and miners all at the same time but because they don't all update on the same schedule, evaluation and testing the change has turned out to be harder than one might expect. 
for just changing a few variables. The, current, the currently discussed plan is to lower the default fee for relay nodes and miners first, wait to see if it received sufficient adoption and what the current sub-default fee transaction to get mined, and then lower the minimum fee the wallet user in a later release. We will post future updates in this newsletter about how, to, how your organization can help use and encourage the adoption of lower minimum relay fees. Again, Bitcoin is a decentralized protocol. Even so trivial changes can have quite complex outcomes. The peer-to-peer -peer protocol changed to restrict locators. The get blocks and get headers message allows a node to request information about blocks that it has not seen by sending a list of blocks it has seen to another node. The receiving node uses the list to find the last block the two nodes have in common and sends information about subsequent blocks. According to an email posted to the Bitcoin dev mailing list by Gregory Maxwell, the Bitcoin talk user CoinR8D was concerned that the requesting node could send up to 32 megabits or megabyte of a block hashes to the receiving node, causing the receiving node to send a lot of input output looking for blocks it does not have. However, Maxwell tests did not find this to be a significant problem. Still, Maxwell proposed limiting the number of allowed locators in the messages. The Bitcoin developer Eric Voskuel said his software was already enforcing a limit and that he was aware of a program, Bitcoin J, that slightly exceeded the limit proposed by Maxwell. The subsequent merged pull request by Maxwell set the limit to equal to the maximum request by Bitcoin J. If you are aware of a software requesting more than 101 elements using the get block or get headers peer-to-peer -peer messages, please post to the Bitcoin dev mailing list or contact someone from Optech. The Schnorbib discussion. A discussion between experts about the algorithm for generating Schnorr signatures last week on the Bitcoin dev mailing list was resolved without any need for changes to the proposed BIP. This may increase confidence that the proposed BIP's parameters are wisely chosen. Notable commits. Notable commits this week in Bitcoin Core, L&D, and C Lightning. Does not include Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core pull request described above. And also please note that the bulk of these changes to all three projects this week seems to be improvements to their automated testing code. We aren't describing those in this newsletter, but we are sure and but we're sure users and developers highly appreciate that work. And of course we do. Uh, Bitcoin Core mergers increases the maximum number of files descriptors Bitcoin Core internal database can use, which can allow more file descriptors to be used for network connections. If you've modified Bitcoin Core to accept more than 177 incoming connections, you may see an additional increase in the number of connections after upgrading past this message. Note, we do not recommend increasing the default unless you have a specific need. A LND commit. Fees entered by the user in Satoshi's per VByte are now automatically converted to the use of Satoshi's per kilobyte, uh, which is 1000 virtual bytes, as defined in the protocol. C Lightning merges a commit, which is a paying node, will no, no longer send an hash time locked contract commitment, a payment, to another node unless it's heard from that node within the past 30 seconds. If necessary, it'll ping the recipient node before sending that commitment. This helps the paying node absorb a payment earlier in the process if that payment was destined to fail anyway because of a network interruption. C-Lightning and various moderator 
and various moderate improvements to the core code for reconnecting to disconnected peers, including exponential backoffs and recognition uh, and reconnecting time fuzzing. Peers absolutely subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter, uh, which is a phenomenal source of in-depth, but in my opinion, still very approachable information. And again, I am not at all an expert in any of these subject matters, but still, reading this stuff and listening to the audiobook here provided helps in my understanding of Bitcoin. And although I'm a noob in most of these aspects, this is the path of acquiring wisdom. It's a continuous path of learning and understanding how this phenomenal free market currency Bitcoin actually works. This is no bullshit. This is nothing for multi-coiners. This is nothing for weekends. This is for true Bitcoiners who really want to understand this beautiful technology. So again, thank you so much for the Bitcoin Optech contributors and supporters uh, who make this phenomenal, phenomenal resource available for all the public to hear and to see. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.